So friends, I'm here in front of you to speak about rational thinking. And according to one of the best constitutions of the world, the constitution of India, which is made by we the people. It's not given by any alleged divine authority or a prophet or a founder of a religion or a cult. But it is we the people who gave it to ourselves, which guarantees so many things as you can see. My favorite part of the constitution is Article 51 AH, which states very clearly that Article 51 AH, please, which states very clearly that it is the duty of every citizen, Article 51 AH, please, yeah to develop scientific temper, humanism, the spirit of inquiry, and reform. Well, the term scientific temper is a typical Indianism. Like we have our co-brothers and we have our non veg Scientific temper is also a typical Indian word coined by the first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. But now it has come into the dictionary. And it is that state of the mind which would like to put everything to the state, to the to reason. You have to question. Scientific temper is that, the spirit of inquiry and reform. Well, to what extent do we have it? Why don't we develop scientific temper is a question that many of us have to answer. Well, I am 68 years of age getting along in years, can't see properly, can't hear properly, and without these spectacles, I'm almost blind. By the way, just check my spectacles. Yeah. I'm very sure that none of you would have thought that they do not have lens, because it's a matter of mental conditioning. That when you see the frame, you think that there are lens. Similarly, you see people dressed in a particular way, doing some things which appear to be extraordinary. You think that they have got divine powers. You think that they have got some powers which ordinary people do not have. Now, let's start with a video of one of the most famous godmen. That godmen again is a typical Indianism, that a person who's like God, who earned around 3 lakh crores was his property when he passed away. Just watch his video. His signature miracle, the most famous one, giving vibhuti from thin air. Video one. He delights them at his daily audiences by magically producing holy ash and scattering it on the crowd. If you compress the ash, then you can make such tablets. Such a tablet can be hidden in the hand and one can move the hand without losing the tablet. Here, one sees the pill of ash between his fingers. Here it is crushed. The ash pills in his closed left hand. He takes a pill over to his right hand. Goldie Horn sits to the left and follows intently. But it is it a miracle that we are witnessing? Well, here is evidence that the alleged famous signature miracle is a total fraud.
well, still people do believe. Not just ordinary people, but even the Prime Minister of India. Uh, the next sequence, please. Sequence two, you will see the then Prime Minister of India on the dais at a function in Hyderabad, where the same person materializes, in inverted commas, a gold chain from thin air. And it was the first time when an outside TV camera was allowed into his presence. And the TV camera shot the video. And tragedy of tragedies. The miracle got busted and revealed. Yeah. Sequence two, please. Scientists may believe that their guru can suspend the law of physics at whim, but skeptics are now questioning the evidence. This video of Sai Baba is now being circulated secretly in India. It appears to show the godman using a stage magician's trick to produce a gold necklace for a distinguished guest. Just before he hands over an award, his fingers seem to be searching for something underneath the wooden box. He then draws back his hand, waves it around and the necklace appears as if from thin air. The event was witnessed by India's Prime Minister and recorded by the state-controlled Indian television network. But after an editor drew attention to the apparent trickery, this footage was not broadcast. Among well, you saw that, right? And I was told, I bolte bolte mat jao. All the time you are talking, talking, talking and showing videos. The best way to convince people is do it yourself. Well, I needed an assistant with a memento and there's nobody around. I needed somebody to hand over a gold chain and there's nobody around. And the people have stranded me right and they want me to do it. Well, both my hands are empty, nothing there. All five fingers are apart, so nothing in between the fingers. I just wave my hand in the air like this, and I do like this. And here I produce a brand new gold chain. Well. well, somebody said, slate of the hand. I said, no boss, slate of the tongue. It's such a simple, cheap, stupid trick that you will wonder how people believed in it. Here is a plastic thumb. Here is a golden chain. I put it, show my hands to be empty, wave it in the air, put it here. When you are busy watching this, here goes the plastic thumb. Yes. Despite of all this, people do believe in such alleged miracles. What is the reason for it? The reason for it are the certificates given by the top people. Sequence 4, please. Watch this. 4. TN. Yeah, right. One of the most powerful men in India. He is chief electoral commissioner and has been tipped as a future president. He is also one of Sai Baba's most conspicuous devotees. I went to Sai Baba last week and he gave me this ring out of nowhere. It's a set with nine gems. There's a ruby in it, there's a pearl in it, there's a sapphire in it, there is an emerald in it, there is a diamond in it, God knows what else, nine stones. And he re realized this for me out of nowhere and now I touch it, I can pull it. Now you will say, I don't believe this, but it happened to me personally, and I am not uh, um, a jungly kind of person. I've got a master's degree in physics. I've got a master's degree in administration and economics from Harvard. I find nothing contradictory between that physics and the fact that I believe that this came out of the blue. Professional scientists do little to challenge such beliefs. This Sai Baba Shrine in Bangalore, the center of Indian science and technology, attracts professors from national research institutions. Experts in engineering, aeronautics and geology gather to worship a man they believe has superhuman powers. People can be a little divine, they can be extraordinarily divine. And he is one such incarnation. We consider him divine. 
There's no question about it. I have been a scientist. I was a non-believer in Sai Baba himself. But today, I'm an absolutely firm believer. I've seen things happen right before my eyes. And uh, the ring I am wearing here, you may perhaps like to uh, picture this. It was materialized. It was created by Sai Baba, just by a wave of his hand. And to prove that there is no uh, hide and seek in this, at one point of time when he produced, he produces a lot of this vibhuti as we call it, or the ash, the white ash that you see. In uh, Puttaparthi, where I went for the first time to meet him, what he did was, he asked me whether I am going to use this vibhuti. Then I said yes. Then he gave it to me. He materialized once again by a small wave of his hands. He circles his hand like this, and these things appear in his hand, and he gives it to you. Just to make me believe, because I am a scientist skeptical about this, he raised his hand like this, and then rolled up his sleeve, and showed me his armpit. He says, Pe people say, I hide these things in my armpit. Do you see that? I said, no, I have no explanation. Well, so, we have bureaucrats, we have the politicians, we have the alleged scientists, all singing praises of an alleged miracle man. Just before this, you saw a video about universal uh, income scheme, elevation of poverty. I've got a suggestion for it. Since we've got a lot of godmen, you just pray to them and then you wave your hands in the air like this. And when you keep on waving your hands in the air like this, you just get money. So you don't need the government for it, right? Well, just something doesn't come from nothing. A cheap trick like the cheaper one that you saw before, fold the note, keep it in between your fingers and wave your hands and there you think that something comes from the air. Nothing comes. Well, I've been speaking about the older generation of Godmen. Now we have got the later ones, the peddlers of concoctions. PowerPoint, please. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. We get those who peddle concoctions. We have those who do contortions. We have those who make great claims. We have those who claim supernatural powers. They say, I can dip my hands into, yeah, see. Our demonstration prove that you don't need to have any supernatural powers. Some of them say, hum zaban ke sache hain. And to prove that they are true of the tongue, I can do an experiment. Because main zaban ka sacha hoon, Agni Dev Miri Zaban Jalayega Nahi. Just watch this. Here is a piece of camphor. I light it. Just put it on my tongue. Yes. Not one or two, but we have got hundreds of such things being done in our country as demonstrations of supernatural power. Well, because of the various limitations here, I just can't do a lot of them. But let's go to our villages where something like this happens. Sequence six, please. I'll show you a very short clip and then maybe I'll have to stop because of the limitations of time. But what I say is the bed of Naya yeah. originated in India. Forward it, forward it. Very, very strange. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there, yeah. See a miracle man comes to a village. Forward it a little bit. He's dressed as a girl, a god man. Yeah, he performs miracles. It must be hard. It convinces people even a little ahead. Little God man simply blesses it yeah. and makes some more. Now a woman is brought to him, possessed by spirits. A little ahead, please. 
fast forward yeah yeah see and he does all things to remove this spirit from her body and then she is finally rid of the spirit and then using his supernatural power he gets exposed a little ahead of this Fast forward a bit. Yes, and here he is exposed by us. This was a drama enacted in the village, enacted the villages. But how they get taken for a ride by such unscrupulous people? And I look forward to involvement from you, the younger generation, to the same team, so that this. task goes ahead we have got a long a long way ahead we have ads today of one single product which can cure 440 diseases and how that ad is done again i got a video but i cannot show it because of the limitation of time but i concentrate on my last slide last but one slide and that is the open challenge to you people that please yeah power point please that it is up to you the younger generation it's time for change it's your time now the ball is in your court i have worked for 40 years exposing a number of godmen a number of miracles number of claims of the supernatural powers we could have a five day workshop actually we had an interaction yesterday for 3 hours and i could not even complete 10% of the things that we had done 90% is still there so what i am looking for is to the younger generation to go ahead and do this it's time for change thank you very much for the patient listening to the video thank you